Welcome everybody. We're going to do something a little bit different this week, a response video. What is the easiest, fastest, cheapest way to get a point across? Sign me up. This past week, the BBC released a video, The Guide to Being a Man, in which they equate emotional expression with weakness and then wonder why men don't want to express emotions. Because the BBC doesn't understand psychology, most psychologists don't understand psychology, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video, what you don't understand about emotions and why your misunderstanding about emotions, equating emotions with weakness, why this misunderstanding is going to leave men much weaker in the long term, or to borrow a concept that I'm sure you like to use, toxic. Don't want to say too much. You will see what I mean. Let's get to it. Bravery in the face of anything. That's what good men do. There's nothing braver than saying, I'm scared. I screwed up. I can't see this through. Actually, there are a few things braver than saying, I'm scared. I screw up. I can't see something through. There's a lot of things braver than that. Now, sometimes you need to admit when you screw up and nothing says a strong, mature, masculine man, masculinity here being testosterone plus individualism, nothing says you're stronger than when you really mess something up, you apologize. I don't think that's a problem we have in our culture, though. I don't think we have a problem with too many men, or a problem not of men apologizing, excuse me. We have a problem with too many men apologizing too many times. I'm in New York, and if you just happen to walk into the door, a door, it doesn't matter what door it is, at the same time that another man is, most likely, instead of saying, excuse me, he's going to say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like a, an upchuck, an emotional upchuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Just please, please validate me. Please make sure I'm okay. I don't want any confrontation, any sort of confrontation. I'm sorry. I just want to say I'm sorry so I'm out of this. But sometimes you need to admit when you mess up. It's not like it's the most brave thing you can do. No, the most brave thing you can do is to stand up for your principles in a room field full of people who disagree with you. That is making a sexist joke in a room full of feminist professors. That's bravery. I don't know if that's the bravest thing any man can ever do, but that's the bravest thing I've ever done. Continuing. Or well, standing up to something you think is cruel. Man, that's one of the hardest things to do. Well, I'm staying up to this video that I think is cruel, and honestly, it's not that difficult. By the way, BBC, it's difficult, not hard. The one thing you guys had was language, was proper usages and proper wordsmithing. You don't even have that anymore. You say hard instead of difficult. Continuing. Swallowing your pride, admitting that you are weak. Help comes to those who ask for it. That's bravery. Yes, it's good to ask for help when you need it. The problem is when do you ask for help? When do you really need help? Sometimes you're asking for help before you really need it. And it's not a bad trait to hold on to something and not ask for help because you want to do it on your own. That's okay. Continuing. Respect the disrespectful. They're the ones who need it most. Insecure or worried, so they bully, blag, and boast. Don't take it so personally. There's nothing you need to prove. They're probably just jealous. Because you're so different, so smooth. Just because somebody's bullying you or bragging about something does not mean that they're insecure. First of all, what even is bullying? Somebody doesn't make you feel good is bullying. Not all bullying is actual bullying. I mean, if somebody is really trying to make you feel bad because of who you are, and they see you're weak and they push through you because you're weak, first of all, that's probably one of the nicest things anybody is ever going to do to you. Expose your weakness like that. But whatever, if somebody's bullying you because they're insecure, it still exposes something in you that you need to work on. So just because they're insecure, it's not bad for you. That's good for you. Oh, this guy feels like he can push me around. What is it, is it about me that makes this guy think he can push me around? How am I afraid of confrontation? And bragging's a lot of fun. It doesn't always come from insecurity. I brag all the time. I'm the greatest psychologist in the world. People say it all the time to me. Eh, and even if that's not true, I do say it all the time to me. Continuing. That doesn't mean you can't stand up for something that isn't right. But just know when to sit down and that a wise man doesn't fight. Uh, actually, fighting is a lot of fun. Wise men fight all the time. 
Wise men get in confrontations all the time, if for no other reason than to, re to, than to learn, excuse me, how to solve that confrontation. You're never going to learn how to solve a confrontation unless you get into them, unless you get in a fight. The guy who wrote this never gotten punched in the face. Just go out and get punched in the face once. It's not that big a deal. Continuing. Also, let's talk about women. Not like we usually do, but a conversation about boundaries because we don't have a clue. Because no one ever teaches us about this stuff in school. If you're not taught what harassment is, how do you know the rules? Wrong. If you respect yourself, you will respect women. But what they're going to do here is, is package deal respecting women into not pushing things on a date, let's say. If you respect women, I don't care what you do. It's always going to be respectful. If you respect yourself, you will respect women. That's where this comes from. It comes from respecting yourself. And you respect yourself by paying heed to your emotions in a healthy way and using them in a healthy way, which this video doesn't tell you how to do. It just tells you to, oh, express your feelings. No, that's not going to make you respect yourself. Becoming aware of your emotions will, but not in the way they tell you in this video. What this video is ultimately doing is ensuring that there will be more harassment against women. Because a man who was made weak, who was told that he must be feminine to be emotional and to be psychologically healthy, he will stop respecting himself unconsciously. Women will not respect him. He will feel humiliated like he deserves a woman, like he's entitled to a woman. And these are the men who harass. I know we all grew up watching those Revenge of the Nerd movies from the 80s. And we thought, oh, it's the bully jock alpha guys who are going to rape and harass women. No, that's not what happens. Ends up being these comics who feels incredibly disconnected from women and disconnected from women to such an extent that all they can do is invite them back to their hotel room and masturbate in front of them. Harassment, any sort of real harassment against women is pathetic. So you therefore must be pathetic to commit that sort of act. No amount of instruction on how to do it is ever going to stop anything. Complete Total obliviousness. Continuing. Her job is not to fend you off. It's yours not to abuse. Actually, it is her job to fend men off. It's our job not to abuse women, and it's her job when she does come across a guy who is a bad situation to fend him off if need be. Can we stop treating women like children? They are not children. They are adults. This is sexist. This is misogyny to say that a woman shouldn't have to fight off a man. Ideally, in a perfect scenario, no. But sometimes something happened and she needs to know how to prepare herself and not absolve herself of responsibility by saying, oh, well, you shouldn't be harassing me in the first place. Continuing. Care about the right stuff. Not your tally of women or if you earn enough the size of your muscles, amount of hair on your chest, the length of that thing between your legs. We need to rethink how we measure success. We All of that, by the way, how many women you have sex with, the amount of money you make, that does matter. Now, maybe other things may matter too, but there's a false dichotomy here. The better you get at managing your emotions, the more in touch with reality you are, you're going to be more likely to make money and have sex with women. Those, those are both desirable goals. Now, maybe you don't measure yourself by those goals. Maybe you don't identify with those goals as much, but the only way you cannot do that is to become emotionally fluid in the first place, emotionally fluid in a way that this video, the writers for this video do not understand. Continuing. You weren't always like this. When I was a little boy, I would cry. Never leave my mother's side. Kiss my little friends goodbye. I thought that little boy had died, but he's still there. We just told him to hide. That little boy was supposed to die. You were supposed to be initiated into the world of manhood. You were supposed to be put in a situation in which, in which you thought you were going to die. And your mother was supposed to be complicit in this. But any sort of hazing or initiation is strained from our culture because somebody might hurt their feelings or this might not be safe. Meh, 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 meh. It is extremely healthy to express emotion, but not like little boy. 
and you're not supposed to go running to your mother, any woman out there resembling a mother who you put your mother issues on and go to her for comfort. You're supposed to start comforting yourself when you're around three or four, maybe even around two. Yeah, you go to your mother when you're six months old. If you remember going to your mother, you have gone to your mother for too long in your life and your mom should have known better and said, look, I'm going to be here for you and I want to talk with you through whatever emotional pain you're going through, but I'm not here to hug you and soothe you. That's what you're supposed to do yourself. That's what you're supposed to do at eight, let alone at 28 or 38. Continuing. Let him out. It's all right. Don't try and fit into this man-shaped mold. It's never too late and you're never too old to change for the better, to be brave, be bold. So get a face tattoo to break out of whatever expectations we have about men and, and masculinity. Look, expectations are healthy. Now, maybe there are some expectations that don't align with reality. Okay, well, let's talk about those expectations. But to simply throw out all expectations, because some of them may not happen to align with reality, is lazy. You are lazy and stupid, and you look stupid if you get a face tattoo. The only tattoo you're allowed to get is of either Beavis or Butthead, preferably both. Continuing. Emotions. We are told that they're just a girl's thing. Bottle up, knuckle down, put them away in hiding. Then explain. Nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you to buckle up and, and put away your emotions. Now, maybe you've internalized those messages, internalized, excuse me, those messages because you don't like yourself, but there is plenty of acceptance. There is very little stigma around men and emotions. You say, oh, look at our superhero movies or look at all the heroes and actions, action heroes throughout the 80s and, and 90s. Yeah, they were all emotional. There are plenty of emotional scenes. Rambo comes to mind, but even in ridiculous action movies like Commando, the amount of emotional turmoil that Schwarzenegger goes through in that supposedly cheesy action movie, there's a lot. We are surrounded by emotional men. Even Dirty Harry is an emotional guy. But men don't express emotion like women, and if you teach them to do that, then they will lose respect for themselves. Here's how you express emotion, men. You do it while taking responsibility for the emotion, not blaming anybody else for the emotion if it's uncomfortable. Now, maybe you're not at fault for having the emotion. Maybe you have the emotion because your dad beat the crap out of you. It's not your fault you have it, but now it is your responsibility. And I would say if you're older than 13 or 14 years old, it is your responsibility to manage this emotion. So you take responsibility while talking about the emotion. And two, you use talking about your emotions as a way to connect with others. Not to isolate, not to say nobody else could ever understand me, not to get attention, not to play the victim. You do it as a way to connect with others. Continuing. Blow, see red, self-destruct mode. Taught your whole life, anger is okay. So every time you feel something, it comes out that way. Yes, anger is okay. Anger is an extremely useful emotion and probably the only way that you're ever going to push through fears that you have is to first get angry. Get my book, Man's Guide to Psychology, and find out why that is. Continuing. Choose pride over a life of pain. It took me years to hug my dad, and his dad was the same. Missing out on love and happiness because we're trapped inside a game. Yeah, nothing wrong with hugging your dad. Nobody has ever told you not to hug your dad. Continuing. Responsibility. Take it for yourself and your friends. Of your actions, your words, and the message that they send. Some things start as a joke, but that's not where they end. There's nothing manly about losing someone loved to something like suicide, gambling, or drugs. Put behind bars trying to prove that they were man enough. Dad's disease was curable. He just left it too long. He thought a real man's never weak and never could be wrong. And if he can't be that, then he might as well be gone. Yeah, responsibility is important, but the way that you're talking about how men need to express their emotions here is by disavowing their responsibility. 
Implicitly, that's what you're teaching here. Just come out and say, BBC, we do not like masculine men. We want to turn them into women because they're easier to handle. Masculine men scare us. And it is scary. Building is scary. Destruction is scary. There's a lot of scary things out there. But if you want to turn men into women, you are going to get something much scarier. Again, you are equating expressing emotion with weakness. You are giving men a false alternative. Either be weak or end up in prison. Talking about emotions, according to this video and according to a lot of psychologists who don't understand the structure of emotions like I do, nobody does, talking about emotions necessarily becomes weakness. Not only does this stigmatize talking about emotions, but it's not true. More importantly, it's not true. Talk about emotions in the right way. Understand why you're doing it while taking responsibility for it for the purpose of making a connection. There is no stigma for men seeking therapy or mental help. The stigma is you, you psychologist, who are equating talking about emotions with weakness. You are creating the stigma and then you're telling people to do away with the stigma. It's not your fault though, ultimately. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't even know what emotions are. There's barely a consensus in psychology about what an emotion even is. Because you don't know how to think about psychology philosophically. What possibly could be emotion based on what we are biologically? This is what I break down at animusempire.com. Go there. Read everything I have. And only then can you be like the Colossus of Rhodes and truly span both sides in this. The ability to be both emotional and strong.